Okay, uh, let me get this started. Good evening. Welcome to the fifth in the Legends of Fly Tying series. My name is Fred Dupre, and I'll be your host tonight and for the next all the sessions in December. You can get our future dates on the FFI website under FFI Online Season 2. While you're on our website, it would be a great time to either renew your membership or to join the FFI and the Fly Time Group. Your dues to the FFI support the many excellent programs like this one. One of the prime benefits to this series is the Q&A session with the tire. If you want to ask questions tonight, you can click on the Q&A button at the bottom of your page. Tonight, we're featuring Mike George. Mike is a master with deer hair. I would call him a deer hair artist. Mike has tied at many large shows nationally and internationally. Mike has conducted fly tying classes and seminars. He's also donated his flies for framing to Project Healing Waters in many FFI clubs, including FFI fly fishing shows. His flies are greatly valued and have brought lots of money to clubs and at national events. Mike's flies have been featured in many of the fly tying magazines and fly tying books. Mike has won the Mustad Scandinavian Open Fly Tying Competition, listen to this, in 2004, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, and a silver award in 2008 and 13. In 2015, Mike received the Buzz Busick Memorial Award. Mike has been on the F FFI Fly Tying Group Board of Governors for several years. Welcome to my friend, Mike George. Hope you're gonna tie one of those, your poppers for us tonight, Mike. Let me get your spotlight. We're, we're kind of ad-libbing here, so it's... There you go. Am I ready? Yeah, before you get right. going, uh, let me let everybody know, Mike's uh, laptop camera crapped out on us tonight and he's using our little remote webcam just to uh, show his face right now so you know what Mike looks like. So, uh, and then uh, he'll switch that camera down to his fly uh, later on. So Mike, uh, take it away. Okay, well, basically my, my technique is different than what you're gonna see pretty much anywhere else. If you, can, if you can see me, uh, typically when you're watching someone tie flies on the internet, they're going to tell you to throw, go ahead and throw on a couple more wraps of, of thread uh, just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And I'm going to tell you, you have to use the minimum number of threads possible in order to have your fly come out tight. And uh, Mike, when, I put this cam, cam, when I put this camera down, uh, I'll be able to show you what, I, what I'm going to do basically with the straw, just kind of give you a demonstration, then we'll just start tying a fly. I've actually already already prepped the tail of the fly, and uh, so we can just spend, spend most of our time just simply putting hair on the hook. I'm going to put the camera down, if I need to adjust it or not, so. That's perfect right there, Mike. Okay. A few things I'm going to try and show you here first, if they don't come up upside down and backwards. This is hard mason, 20 pound hard mason. I use it for weed guards. Uh, this would be a fly that has a weed guard on it. What I'm using this for is basically a stopper on the back of my flies. Hey, Mike. I've got the. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Let me let me share yeah. with the the group. Uh, a picture of the fly you're going to tie and the recipe. Okay, you can hold a second. I'll hey, do that. I've got the I've got the fly. I've got the fly right here. Okay. Then let that's me. Pretty much the fly I'm going to tie tonight. Okay. The let thing me. It's on the front of it. Yeah. Let me the share. Thing that's the... on the front of it's actually a template. 
Mike, let me share the uh, your recipe. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and start while I look for that, Mike. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna, let me refocus the camera since I got it down. The hard mason. We already talked about the hard mason. Uh, on this fly, you can basically see the. I've got a little piece of hard mason on the back of this hook, and that helps me keep helps me from keeping to push that hair off the back of that hook. Believe it or not. Uh, in my list of things to do, I talk about a cigar, uh, a, cig <laughs> a cigar holder, and this is a little metal cigar holder. <clears throat> and you actually use this to stack stack bucktail with, because bucktail just doesn't really stack very well. So it gives you an idea of, of how I stack that bucktail. This actually came from a guy, Fred McFoot, no, this guy, this guy was actually came from Slim Mitchell. Who was a member of the road, Round Table Roadkill out of Dallas, I believe it was. I do use a lot of fly tire Z mint. The reason I've got this up here is you can take your the little bubble that it comes shipped in. You can modify it by cutting it. If you can see that or not. All you have to do is let your stuff fall over on the desk one time, then you come up with this. And then you just set it down on the table and it works. Hard mason away. I do finish my flies off. With a, with a UV resin, just so you know. And it looks, it looks like bug bone. This is my crystal flash. What'd you say? Fred? It looks like bug bond you use, right? UV resin? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Must add. I did a lot, of, obviously I got a lot of comp, got a lot of uh, must add hooks from entering all those contests all the time, but what we're using tonight is a C25 or a C52S BLN, it happens to be a size two. And I do use double edge razor blades. And that's about it. As far as special, special set, well, I, I do have a, a half inch tool, which I think probably most tires have a half inch tool and I use a bodkin. This is the bobbin that I use for the for the for the deer hair thread. It's weighted, has a nice shaft on it. And this one also has a little rubber stopper on it. So you can control your thread when it's in storage. I'm gonna take that little rubber stopper off so I can use it. Uh, hey, Mike, we have, we have a question. Uh, how is the hard mason secured to the bend of the hook? And what is hard mason? Hard mason, hard mason is uh, basically it's a really hard monofilament. It's stiff and you use it basically for salt water. And this is another example of what you use that hard mason for. This is a weed guard. And it's made out of, this one's actually 30 pound hard mason. I don't know if you can see that or not very well. But this is a double weed guard. And that's what you use that the hard mason for a lot. It's for, the, it's for the weed guards. And how do you, what how I've do you done, secure that on a hook? Well, that's, that's an entirely different process <laughs> for that particular weed guard. What I've done with this is I just put a little bit of a weed, a little bit of that weed guard on the back of this hook. And believe it or not, when I'm packing my hair back, that little piece of, of hard mason on there held on with the uh, unithread, six out unithread will keep me from packing my hair off the back of that hook. So, so, so basically I, and this, this, and this, and this fly has that on that also, if you can see it. And then I put the, put the, the tail material right on top, right in front of it. I okay. want to make sure that you knew that hard mason was on there because if you don't have that on, you start packing your hair back, it'll just come off, just go off the back of the hook. Uh, and I showed you the template already, I believe. And the template actually comes from this is what my my head cement. This is a lid from my head cement. You can see that little device right there. It pops out. When it pops out, it looks like this. 
And that's where this came from. So that's my template. So I, when I'm done with the fly, I can actually put head cement on that and push this on and it doesn't stick to it. You know, it does, does stick to it a little bit and you have to kind of pry it off, but it does come off fairly easily. And with that, I think I'm gonna get ready to start putting hair on the hook. Uh, <clears throat> my first layer is gonna be white. This Mike, are you going to be putting that plastic, plastic barrier? Pardon? Are you going to put that plastic sheet on first? Yes. What Fred's talking about is, is this. This is what my Sunday newspaper used to come in. I'm not sure people even get Sunday newspapers anymore, but basically it's self-healing. <clears throat> By self-healing, I'm going to find my scissors here. By self-healing, I'm going to poke a little hole in it, and it's going to kind of collapse back on itself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this right over my eye and put this right over, right over that. This is where my, my tail and everything, the tail and the flash is actually tied in right there. And I'm gonna set that right there. So now when I start trimming my, trimming my hair with the razor blade, I don't trim off my, my flash and my tail and stuff. Thanks, Fred. Now I'm gonna start with white. I'm gonna use this, this thread Hopefully you'll be able to see that thread against the white, the white, the white uh, bucktail. And this is two tendon ear flat wax fly master plus. And it does have, it's got the, the strands are straight, but every now and then, but they wrap, they wrap a strand around it. So it's got a little bit of a grip to it. It doesn't flatten out all the time. So I'm gonna put on about three or four wraps on here and a whip finish if I can keep this steady. Cut off my tag in. And that's one 140 denier thread? Nope, this is 210 flat wax fly master plus. 210, okay. 210. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of head cement on here. You can see my little bodkin. I'm gonna clean this off. This is not sharp. I'm not sure how to. If I push this down against my skin, it doesn't, it doesn't poke it. So when I put my head cement on there, it just kind of falls off that flat end. If you have just a sharp tip on there, you have to wipe it back and forth. When it's like this, it'll actually just kind of adhere right to that, right to that thread. Okay, you know, I think I'm, I think I'm ready to go now. Typically, they'll tell you to get a bunch of bunch of hair about the size of a lead pencil. That's probably about the size of a lead pencil. And I grabbed it by the tips. And I'm gonna shake it. I think you see short the short stuffs coming out of it. And I have we have cats in our house, so this is a cat brush. It's actually a dog shiner brush, is what it really is. I'm gonna use that to, to pull out the excess. So that cleans it all out. What that does, it makes those fibers so that they, they slip together and, and fall into place right. Now, I'm gonna set this down real quick. This, this straw is gonna imitate my, that bunch of hair that I'm ready to put on there, okay? When I wrap my thread through here, I'm gonna pull that down and my, and my hair is gonna take up that much space on that hook. Okay, and I'm gonna try and put my, each thread wrap's gonna be right on top of the existing, the existing thread wrap. So as I go down, it's only gonna take up that much space in that hook. I think I mentioned earlier, almost any video you watch on the internet, they're gonna tell you to throw on a couple more wraps just to make sure that the hair stays in place. Well, if you throw on a couple more wraps, you don't know where they're going. So now you're taking up that much space on that hook. And you've got this, and you've got this gap in there that you're not filling because the hair won't come together. 
So you're gonna find out when I'm putting this hair on the hook, everything's gonna have, have the thread wrap in, in one spot, even though, I, even though I'm stacking the hair up, the thread's still in one spot. Now you have to hold, in order to do this, you have to hold the, hold the hair like this, it's straight up and down, it's like a 90 degree angle on my index finger. Because when I get into this, this part of my index finger, my thumb's gonna pull the other, the existing hair out of the way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretend that that piece of plastic is an existing hair. I'm gonna shorten my thread. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna keep the, I'm gonna keep it short. And I'm gonna go around the hair once, not around the hair, over the hair and around the hook. If you can see all that or not. Now I'm gonna pull on that thread. When I pull on the thread, I'm going to pull the hair into place. I'm pulling the hair into place and I'm gonna tilt it up. Okay, I'm, I'm afraid I'm washing out. Now I'm gonna wrap that thread around there once. So now there's actually two wraps of thread on that hair. I'm gonna pinch it real tight with my index finger and my thumb on the top, the tips. I'm gonna flare the bottom. Can you see that? Just flared. Now I'm going to release tension on my thread, release the tips. I'm going to give that a tug and then move it around to the bottom. It goes right straight to the bottom. We can't see it because of the angle of the camera, but right now there's one of those thread wraps came undone. There's only one thread wrap holding that hair in place right now. So I'm going to bring my thread back over to, to, to position it for the next, for the next bunch. I'm gonna straighten up my hair on the bottom down here real quick. If you can see it, which we can't, but these are all my butts and all my tips and everything is evenly distributed. I'm gonna take another bunch of hair, basically the same as the bottom as the as the bottom layer. I'm gonna shake it, which loosens up the under fur. Allows me to pull those those little stray fibers out of there. I mentioned that the hair is not the hair is not hollow. The hair the hair has air cells in it. What we're doing is we're collapsing those air cells. Okay, now I'm going <clears> to <throat> bring my thread up. Actually, I'm not going to bring my thread up. I'm going to reduce my thread wrap. So I'm going to bring my one of those wraps that I put on. I un I just into undid it. I'm going to measure my my existing hair with the hair I'm putting on. I'm going to pinch it with my index finger and my thumb. And unfortunately, we're wash, washing out, I'm afraid. Now I'm going to put the thread, I'm going to hold that, hold that thread and wrap it around one more time. And this little, little spot right here on that hair actually helped guide that thread right down into place. Now I'm going to flatten it out. These are all my butts and these are all my tips. So everything went on smooth and everything went on even. <clears throat> and there's only two wraps holding that holding that top layer on. So essentially, Mike, Mike, so essentially you are yeah. stacking hair on the bottom and you're stacking hair on the top with this technique. Correct. Right? Yes, yes, I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not spinning anything. Correct. <clears throat> now, <laughs> I've only grabbed that, you can't, you can't see this, I'm afraid. I've only grabbed that once, I've already got an indentation in my thumb, and my thumb and my middle finger from packing that hair back, because this is my hair packer. Now, if I can turn this, I don't know if I can turn it or not. I'm going to pull the hair back, bring my thread up. My thread is parallel with the shaft of that hook. Okay, I'm gonna pull that just as tight as I can without breaking anything. I'm gonna wrap it around my hook twice and slide it back into position and pack it one more time. Then this is my hair, this is my half inch tool. And put on a couple half inches. Now, if we look at you, you can see my you can see my thread in there. Now I'm going to pack that thread thread a little bit more. I said I kind of buried that thread right into that hair, so I'm packing everything back just as high as I can. Here's my head cement. 
Okay, now we're gonna put on another layer, another layer of white. And this is basically the pattern, the pattern that we're going to do. So right now I've put on that first layer of white, now I'm gonna put on another layer of white, and then I'm gonna layer some stuff on top of it so you can see how to layer it. So again, I'm grabbing the grabbing the hair by the tips, shaking the, the stray stuff, actually the short hair out. So I want all the hair to be about the same length if I can get it the same length. Grab it about in the middle. Take my thread and shorten it. Now this is where I'm saying this part of my index finger, my thumb, is going to pull this hair out of the way. Can you see that? I guess I can't ask. I'm going to tell you, you have to see that. This is pulling that hair out of the way. Break, shorten my thread. I'm capturing the thread between my thumb and the hair. The thread is real short. I'm not doing this. The thread is real short. I'm pulling it down to the shaft of the hook and I'm pulling on it. As I'm pulling on that, I'm turning my hair so it goes out into position. Now you can see one, I'm hoping you can see that one, one thread wrap. And there's a second thread wrap. I'm going to flare it. I grabbed it tight with my index finger and my thumb. I flared it. I'm going to pull this hair out of the way and pull that around so it goes down to the bottom of the hook. I'm going to bring my bring my thread back up and position it for my next layer. And I'm going to put another little layer of white on here. Go through the prep on every on every bunch. You want to get all that all that uh, under fur out of there because the under fur keeps the hair from moving around and going into position like it should. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to lay this right on top. And in, or, in order for me to reduce my thread wraps, I'm going to raise this up. I'm capturing the thread between my thumb and the hair so I can control it. I'm bringing it down. I'm measuring it for length. It should be right in the center of that shaft, that hook. And I'm, going to, I'm pinching it tight with my index finger and thumb of my left hand. I'm flaring it. I'm holding it in place. I'm going to bring my thread around. Because I'm holding it in place, there's a little valley right here. I don't know if you can see the thread in there or not. <clears throat> now this thread is going to lay right on top of that thread. Now I'm going to mash that down to even it out. And <clears throat> my vice, I've got my vice marked so I know where my center line is all the time. Now if we look on our pattern, the next next the next bunch of hair we're going to put on is kind of a, a fluorescent green or bright green. So this is my next pe next piece of hair. What I'm looking for when I get hair is I want hair to be, you want the hair to be as thick as you can get it because that's where all the thickness is, plus it, it, it uh, flares better. You can't see me, but I'm pulling it, pulling it off as close to the skin as I can get it. Every piece of hair comes off as close to the skin as you can get it because that's where all the buoyancy is. Yeah, if everybody, shake it, if everybody shake notice, it Mike, if everybody noticed, Mike has uh, never let go of his scissors. Yeah. He These always are do Dr. Slick. They're actually Dr. Slick, and the reason I hold I can hold them is because of the finger the finger holes are big. It fits in my hand well. I'll never set I'll never never set the scissors down because so I can just slip my thumb in and out and hold it, and I do all my work with the scissors in my hand. Uh, the scissors are old enough. These are gold gold handles, and you can't even see the gold handles anymore. Uh, this has been <laughs> there's a little rubber stopper on here, and a little rubber stopper broke off. So this is this is hot melt glue to put my stopper back on, and the scissors still work. Now they're not serrated. Everyone's going to tell you you need serrated scissors scissors to work with deer hair. And what I and I'm not telling you to do this, and I'm not even condoning it. But what I do. And I take a piece of medium sandpaper, I stick it on once and cut, pull it off, stick it on, turn the scissors over and cut one more time. And that kind of roughs up those edges. It gives me this, gives me a serrated edge. And like I said, I'm not sure I'm gonna tell you to do that because I'm sure Dr. Slick would appreciate it, but it works. You know, this is gonna go right down in the center of this white stuff. You can see how big my 
see how big my bunch of hair is. Once again, I'm using the index finger, the index finger and my thumb to pull this existing hair out of the way. I'm gonna raise my thread to, to reduce the thread wrap, capture it, put it down in place. I'm measuring it. I want it to be about the same length on both sides of my, both sides of the eye of my hook. I'm gonna flare it. I'm pinching it in the back when I flare it. Bringing my thread back up, it goes right down in exactly the same place. I want my pattern to be even. Sometimes it comes out even, sometimes it doesn't. It just kind of all depends on what the hair wants to do sometimes, but that's that's my first layer. Now this, the, sec, the next layer on here is gonna be black. Black can be kind of hard to work with sometimes uh, because it's slick. Sometimes when they dye the black, in order for it to come out really black, they have to dye it twice. When they dye it twice, it makes a hard, it makes a hair hard and it doesn't flare well. So you have to be careful when you pick out your hair. You'll find that it has more of a sheen. This may have been dyed twice, but it's been dyed twice with black. And sometimes it won't, the hair won't, won't flare the way you want it to. And it's just the nature of the black hair because of how they have to dye it. Okay, now I'm gonna raise my thread up. Put my down in place. I'm capturing the thread between my thumb and the hair, putting it down into place, flaring it, bringing my bringing my thread back up and flaring it again. I can tell right away when we when we get ready to trim this, my green's not going to go all the way around, but we're not going to mess with it. So you can see my black. Now we're going to put a piece of. Uh, lighter colored green on the top. This is this is a really good piece of body hair. The hair is thicker, it's longer. Uh, there's very little under, you can see some under fur in it, but there's very little under fur in it. And this is just almost a perfect piece of hair. The thicker, the better. Uh, Tom Schmecker, who owns Wapsie Fly, would tell you that the best deer hair would come off of a deer that was seven years old. It was a seven-year-old buck that was roadkill in northern Michigan on the 15th of February. So you want to have the, <laughs> it's got to be really cold to make that, make that deer hair thick like it is, like we want it. I think that the extended deer seasons now are affecting the, the quality of the deer hair that you get because a lot of it's thin. And that's probably because it was taken early in the season. Okay, now I'm going to raise my thread up, put it down into place, flare it. I'm holding it with my index finger and my thumb in the back so it doesn't go anywhere. Got my little groove there. I'm going to pull it tight. Hey Mike. Hey Mike. Yeah. I tell you what's important yes. for everybody to notice is uh, to notice. he, in order to get a real uh, compact body, you have to minimize the number of thread wraps of tying down deer hair. Yeah. And the, yeah. the technique Mike's using does that. Uh, he has no more than two wraps per bundle of hair, and they're right on top of one another. And that that really yes, gives sir. him a very dense body. Yeah. Now go back, I'll go back to that, that straw thing just real quick, because you can see that I'm doing every thread wrap, no matter how many bunches I've got on there is on top of the other thread wrap. And I'm, I'm controlling all of that. I don't remember what I do with my straw. This is, and that's basically what Fred is talking about. Every one of those thread wraps going on top of each other. So now I'm only taking up this much room on this on the space on that hook. Now I say most people are going to tell you to throw on another thread wrap because you want to make sure your hair isn't going to go anywhere. Well, when you throw on another thread wrap, and this is a, is a duplication of what I told you before, this is what you get down on the on the shaft of that hook. You just get an open open space where there isn't anything there. And once again, all my thread wraps are on top of each other. 
I'm going to pack this back. <clears throat> okay. I think I, I put half inches on there. Sometimes when I talk, I forget where I'm at. There's my head cement. <clears throat> I put one more layer of white on here. And then I'm going to put a, put a, uh, a layer of hair on using a half inch method. And I'm hoping with this camera, you will be able to see it pretty well. But I'm going to thin this out a little bit. What I'm really looking for is just to separate everything. Separate my patterns. And this is going to go right on the bottom. Once again, I'm pulling this hair back with my index finger and my thumb, getting it out of the way. Shortening my thread, capturing the thread between my thumb and the hair, and the hair, the short, the thread is short. I'm not doing this. The thread is short, and I'm pulling it right down to the shaft of that hook and pulling, pulling the hair down into place. Flaring it, pull out of the way, goes to the bottom. I'm set my thread for the for the second wrap. Actually, you can't see it back here. I don't want to show that white piece again. But I am taking the skin clear down to the or that hair clear down to that skin as close as I can get it because that's where all the buoyancy is. Shaking it, getting rid of the under fur. I think that bottom one was just a little bit smaller than that, so I'm going to thin that out a little bit. I'm going to pull this back and hold it back with my index finger and my thumb. Capture the thread, pull it down into place. Oh, I'm holding it tight with my index finger and my thumb so I can retain that little little valley to put my thread in. Now that thread's laying right on top of itself, just exactly what Fred was talking about. Mike, I have a question. Okay. Uh, you know, you there's all kinds of hair packers on the market, but uh, yeah. you use your fingers. Why your yeah. fingers instead of a, a, a hair packer? I just never got into using a hair packer. I don't, I don't, because of my technique, I don't have to use something special to pump, to pack it back. Now I might have muscles. <laughs> I might have muscles in my thumb right here and right here that most people don't have because of doing this for so many years, but I just never, I just never got into using a hair packer, and I don't have to. Uh, this is a, this is a fly that's already basically been done in the same, same pattern, except it's just the hair's different. But you'll find that my hair is just as tight as it can be. This is another one, basically the same thing. This, these, these were put together exactly the way I'm putting this one together. Head cement. Okay, now I'm going to put this, I'm going to use a, a half inch method to put this, this little black line on. That black line. This actually came from Lacey G. I don't know if I started to tell this or not. Lacey G is actually the person who started Wapsie Fly uh, before Tom Smucker bought it from him in, in Independence, Iowa, I believe it was. And uh, Lacey G is also the person that gave us turkey marabou. He was also the first person to use crystal fly or Christmas tinsel on a crappie jig. He was a very, very creative tire. But this came from a little book that he and Edwin Silas put together, supposedly leaning against an old oak tree in Lake Victoria, Minnesota with a bottle of scotch. And they put that little book together. But this comes out of that little book, this little half hitch method. Now these are the these are the butts. I want the butts to be up because that's where all my flotation is. I want the top part of the fly to be be able to float. I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna lay it around that that hair once. I hope you I think you can probably see that pretty well. Now my bobbin is weighted. 
So it, help, it helps me do this. If it weren't a weighted bobbin, I couldn't do this. Because that's going to actually help me control that thread. You can see the, you can't see the bobbin going up and down. If the bobbin's going up and down. I'm going to pinch this, pinch this. So you can see what I've got. This thread is going to go on my side of the hook and on the top of the shaft of that hook. And unfortunately, you can't see that. You have to believe me. And you're basically splitting like splitting that hair through the eye, correct? Yeah, and I'm, go. and I'm going to split it with the eye. Now that's actually if you if you pull that hair off of there, that would that would actually be a half hitch. So I'm putting this hair on with a half hitch. And that's how Lacey G tied all of his all of his all of his deer hairs, basically with this half hitch method. Now see if I can remove it and see if that half hitch stays there. See that? That's a half hitch. Now that I, I mentioned earlier that sometimes just the black hair can be hard and doesn't flare as well. So sometimes this little the black line doesn't come out exactly where you want it to because sometimes this, this hair is just hard, but I want that to be as even as I can get it. I'm going to put it back into place. I'm going to drop it down a bit more because this is where all the flotation is and that's where all the flaring is going to come from. And I'm going to pull that tight. So now you can, I'm assuming you can see it, that's fairly, fairly evenly distributed. I'm going to keep it, keep tension on it, otherwise it'll fall off. Let's see if I can turn that and tighten down my little knob a little bit. And I'm just going to feed that, feed that over and put it around the shaft of that hook and pack it back. Two half inches. And I'm going to kind of, might be a little thin and thin in a couple of places, but it actually came out pretty good, I think. Okay, now we're going to put the put the red put the red on this fly, and we may even see if we can get really really excited and put a put a white face on the front of it after we put the red on. Put this back out of my way. Now the red's going to go on exactly the way the other ones went on. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Got a question uh, from the audience. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this gentleman says, "I grew up in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, and there is a Lake Victoria near Waconia, Minnesota. Is that That's the lake it. you're referring That's to?" That's it. That's it. Okay. Yes. That's it. Now, if you can find that old oak tree out there, <laughs> it's got a it's got an empty scotch bottle laying next, laying next to that oak tree because they drank a bottle of scotch when they put this thing together. Is a story that I've been told, and the, the the people that told me the story knows knew Lacey G himself, so I'm sure it was true. He and Edwin Silas were pretty good buddies and pretty good drinking buddies, I guess. But that's that's the lake. That's pretty cool. Okay, it's going to go right on the bottom. Exactly the same thing we've been doing. Flare it. Go around. Set my thread for the next, for the layer that goes on top. This is the little green book, by the way. Practical Flies, Lacey G and Edwin Sias. You may be able to find it on the internet. I don't know. It's just it's just kind of cool. It's his it's history. The uh, editor of the Sioux City Journal knew Edwin Silas and knew Lacey G and gave me a whole bunch of information. It was really kind of cool. Then there was a uh, 
a, a, a bait shop, literally a bait shop across the river in South Sioux on the Nebraska side. And they knew Lacey G also, and they gave me all kinds of information. It's really, he was really popular up in that area. Okay, half hitch. Ed Smith. Mike, there's a question uh, from the audience. What is the advantage okay. of the half hitch technique that you just demonstrated? As opposed to spinning? Yeah. I get a much, I can get a, I think I can get a much denser, a much denser fly simply because I'm controlling when, when, the, when they're spinning that hair, they're the people that are telling you to throw on another couple of wraps just to make sure it's staying in place. And you don't know where those wraps are going. I'm controlling the wraps by using this stack method and I'm, got, I'm putting each wrap on top of itself. It's inevitable that people that are telling you to spin, they're gonna say, throw on a couple more wraps and it just, and it just doesn't come out right. The stackers, there are some, some really good stackers. I won't go into, go into all the names, but the stackers are really good. And they, they, they come up with really, really tight flies. Spinning doesn't work well that way. Did I answer the question? Uh, I believe you did. Uh, the the okay. he, uh, asked a question, I was referring to the Lazy G half itch technique. Oh, so what are the advantages to this? Advantages to that? Yeah. For me, the only real advantage is that I can put that nice little black line around it. I have never tried to actually make a whole fly with it, even though Lacey G did it that way. So you you think that that that's a better way to uh, put a line around a fly than spinning it? Yeah. Okay. Well. Now, Fr Fred can probably attest to this as well as anyone else who's actually watched me tie, but I'm more artistic with my flies than I am practical fly fishing, even though I do use them. In fact, I've got flies on here. I can show you they're, they're really good for sailfish. And they're put on exactly this that I build, and they're, they're made just exactly the same way, a layer on the bottom, a layer on the top. And they will go through multiple fish. If you think about what a sailfish can do to a fly, and, and they just can't tear these up. Hey, Mike, somebody just the said that they yeah. just ordered the book from Amazon. Okay, thank <laughs> you, cool. Okay. I don't know if you can see how much hair, how much hook I've got left. I'm not sure how to show that. I'm going to put one more layer of, of red on here, and I'm going to put one more layer. I'm going to put a white face on the front of this. If I can catch Mike, me. one catch more question. Mike, one more question. Uh, does your method okay. work for other deer hair flies? Such as. You mean like uh, a, a muddler minnow or something? Yes. Yes. Yes, it will. It, it will give you a really tight head. So if you want to float, uh, it would work really well. However, muddler minnow was originally made very, very tight, very, very sparse so that it would sink. And it would actually take mud off the bottom of the, of the stream or moss off the bottom of the stream and rub it into the, into the deer hair so that it would actually sink better. So you can add, you can, in the, <laughs> the way most people tie it now, they want that head to be tight, but that's not the way it was done originally. But yeah, this will work for that. I think I answered the question. You did. God, there's a, no, I'm trying to think. Unfortunately, my brain doesn't work well. I'm getting too old. I 
I use, <laughs> you can make, you can make a, salmon eggs with with this with this method that actually when you fish them for trout use a little bit of weight and they kind of float up and it's kind of like a little flag out there saying eat me eat me they work it works real well for making caterpillars now you're gonna think i'm gonna have too much hair on this hook but See if I can make it work. Yeah, one of, one of the uh, uh, creations of Mike. I told told you he was an artist with deer hair. He made a, a coral snake, a jointed coral snake, uh, oh God. using this technique, and uh, it it is awesome. I can, <laughs> when I'm done with this, you want me to? I can go out in the garage and get it. I have a cage in the garage. We'll see how much time we got, okay? Okay. Okay, now you can see how much I how much space I've got left on this hook. I didn't even think about bringing out that coral snake. It's true to true to life for length and size and everything. I've been told if you ran across it in the woods, you'd want to kill it. Okay, now you can see what, kind of see what I've got left. I'm going to hope. I'm going to turn this over because so I'm going to put a layer of, of, of white hair. We want to pack this on just as tight as we can get it. Set my thread. This is going to be a white face. I'm afraid you can't, you can't see how much hook we don't have left. I move the camera real quick, Fred. Sure, go ahead. You, you, you don't have it. Hold on, you're missing it. I'm not. Well, it's hard I, to I'm see because to it's say. out of focus, Mike. Yeah. You're gonna have to put it back. Yeah, it's there out you of go. focus. Yeah, but you can see there isn't much, isn't much room there. Every time I watch Mike tie one of these flies and he gets towards the eye, uh, I tell Mike, I said, I, I wouldn't put anything more on that fly. And he happens to put two more layers on. It's amazing. <laughs> now I'm actually going to use the eye of the hook to do this. I'm, I'm holding up, once again, I'm holding this hair back with my index finger and my thumb. I'm capturing the th thread between my thumb and the hair. I'm coming down. I'm hoping you can see that I've I've wrapped that around the eye of that hook. Okay, I'm going to put a set in that hair before I put it down. Now I'm pull it down. I'm pulling back on that on that hair as I'm pulling down on the thread, and that helps me capture the eye of that hook. Now I've captured it. Now you've turned the hook the fly upside down at this point, right? Yeah. Now it was upside down when I put this on. Correct. Now it's right side up. Right side up. Yeah. yeah. It takes a lot of practice to do some of this stuff, but okay. Now I'm going to raise my thread. I've already captured it with, with the eye. Raise my thread. Bring it down. Now as I as I pull tight on that thread, I've got to. I've got to pull up on that hair. Can you see how I'm pulling up on the hair? And that's, that's actually pulling that thread up into that eye. The thread goes right back down on top of itself, just like it always has. Now you can see what I've got. But I'm actually using the hair to control the thread when I'm doing that. And I'm pulling back on it just as, <laughs> I don't know if we have a mixed audience out there or not, but I'm raising my left butt cheek up off the chair. I'm pulling on this hard. So 
Seven's my lucky number, so that's how many wraps I put on there. I'm going to tilt my, my half inch tool up so, it's, so that thread will slide down into place better. I'm actually going to put a couple double half hitches on this now. And then if I turn this counterclockwise, I'll thin that, make that thread a little thinner. If you can tell that or not, maybe you can. And slide that into place. I'm using my scissors as a knife. Now this is where that little template comes into place. I'm going to go ahead and just pull it off of this fly. You see that little template? I'm just going to pull that off and put it on this one. Lower that down a little bit. Okay, now that's my template. We're going to start start trimming and see what we come up with. Normally, I would take this out of the vise to do this, but you'd never be able to see it if I did. So, so you're holding those scissor blades right on the template, going parallel all the way back, right? Yes. Let me, let me pull. Let me pull it off. Is that is that better? Yeah, hold it back a little bit. There you go. You see our black line? There's our black line. There's our dark green. This is where the magic comes in. See, this see is the fi final finish of all his, all his work. Well, sometimes I even impress myself. OK, we have a question while you're trimming there. Uh, okay. Even with as few wraps that you you do, do you ever find that you capture a small amount of hair that gets folded over? If not, yes. what is, if not, what is the function of using so few wraps? What is the function of what now? Using so few wraps. By using, well, first of all, my, my fly's tighter because uh, I don't have, I don't have uh, threads laying next to each other. Everything's on top of itself. Uh, my flies, <laughs> my flies are, are, I can't say they're more, more durable because I'm not sure you can really say that, but they're very durable. Uh, I have a friend who has a pink and green fly that's been, literally been fished around the world. It's caught all kinds of fish, and it's and it's like it's practically like it's new. Uh, I can show you show you one of my billfish flies when we get done here, and I tie the billfish flies with the minimum number of wraps I can possibly use, and these flies last and they go through billfish. And I have a friend who fishes for billfish out of Guatemala, and he and he uses the same flies every year. He goes down, and they look like they're new, just because they they last. Everything Mike, is as tight as I can make it with. Yeah. Mike, could you hold it up a little bit so we can see you cut? There you go. Move it away from the I camera. Don't know if I answered the question or not, but I think you did. When you go, when you go, when you, when you, yeah, when you go to throwing on extra wraps, you just, you just run the possibility of just making your fly loose. Mike, could you hold the, the fly back away from the camera and center it a little bit so we can see it? 
Yeah. There you go. That's good. Let's see. I have a razor blade. Yeah, if you can hold it up so we can see that. Hold it further I'm away from the camera, right. Mike. Do it right on top of the vice. There you go. Well, let me let me just take this off. Okay. I have a vacuum cleaner that works really well. It was my mother-in-law's. It's one of those Electroluxes. Yeah, if you can move it back, now, can you Mike. See what I'm doing? Mike, a little further back, further back, yeah. right there. What I want to do is I want to, instead of gouging down into it, I want to try and look down the, the where I'm actually trimming so that the blade lays right on top of what's been trimmed and stays flat. Can you still see it, Fred? Yeah, I'd pull it back away from the camera a little bit. There you go. So this process of the razor blade takes quite some time. Yeah, uh, I mean, we'd be, we'd be here for a long time, but just so you get the idea what I'm doing. Yeah, I know when I start with the razor blade, it might be 20, 30 minutes before I finish the fly. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I really am not gonna try and finish this because it'll take too long. I have no idea how long I've been tying now. You're, you're at the hour mark. Yeah, well. Well, you get the idea. Why don't you hold it up a little bit? Can't see you. There you go. Yeah. It's hard, it's hard to watch the camera and watch what I'm doing at the same time. Why don't we just cut the, uh, the, the pieces off the back with scissors and, and, and then display the flat. There you go. This, and this is what it comes. And that's, I mean, basically, this is how it comes out. Yep, that's it. That's it. Yep. I got some more questions. Let me look at the question section. Okay. Uh, is there, in regards to fishing these flies, is there any special treatment you use to clean or dress them between fishing trips? No. I just I just bring I just put them back in the in the box. I want to make sure they dry out, and then just take them back out and use them again. And I think the I think the reason I mean, for that just, is your they, they just they're 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 so tight that they just stay together. I mean, you don't have to do anything with them, and they catch fish after fish after fish. Like I don't even know how to, how to explain it, but. I can't see it, Mike. This is this is tied exactly the same way, and you can you can you can kind of poke the needle into it, but Mike, I can't, I can't. see that. Okay. I mean, it's almost right. it's almost like it's like it's almost like a hard body. Something. Yep. Yeah, I don't know if you I don't know if you can actually hear it or not, but right. That's what it sounds. That sounds like I'm hitting a piece of wood. Mike, is there, if you, you've you got a couple of minutes, is there anything else you'd like to talk to, talk to the audience about? Uh, I can show on some other flies just real quick. You, if we could do that real quick, that'd be I talked, great. I talked about those, I talked about those billfish flies. In fact, the, the Fly Fishers International has a, a new saltwater publication coming out. And this fly is in that pub is in that publication. 
And this is this is a billfish fly. And it's, it's tied with a layer on the top, layer on the bottom. You can see my pattern. The pattern's the same as what I did with this one. Every, everything's the same. It's a little different technique to put the hair on the bottom, but it's that goffle treble hook in the back and the hook up front. And that, this will go through multiple sailfish. Well, I've seen the I've seen the pictures of the sailfish caught on that fly. It's incredible. Yeah, we're not talking about small this sailfish. Is a little different. These are a little different technique, but hold it back. Hold it back from the. Uh, notice, notice the eyes. Notice the eyes are tied in. Mike, like hold this, it I back from the camera. There you go. Any, there you I go. I don't glue anything on. I tie. I literally tie the eyes in. That's a different technique to tie those eyes in. Yeah, those aren't painted on. They're actually hair. No. Yeah. Well, Mike. Right here, I don't know if you can see it or not. You know, if you can see it or not, there's little red dots on the bottom of this one, the whole length of it. Well, Mike, I think uh, I think we're going to end in the session tonight, and uh, we really appreciate you showing us your artwork because I, I consider it artwork. Okay. You're a master, and uh, and thank you so much for uh, volunteering your time. Uh, Good night. Letter, can I letter. say I do have? Can I say? Can I say I have a website? Sure. Deer deerhairsculptures.com. In that in the deerhairsculptures.com, there's a there's a page that's dedicated to fly tying, and I go into a lot of detail as to as to what to look for in deer hair. So I just so you know know that that's there. And I, I do sell videos, but that's not why I'm doing this. Well, I, I again, want to make sure you, and you and you actually see this, you actually see the selfish flies in action. There's a, a, a page de, uh, dedicated to Guatemala. Great, Mike. Again, appreciate you uh, you showing up tonight and sharing your uh, your craft and. Uh, Thank, thanks so much for, for being with us. And so- Well, well I, I really appreciate the opportunity, Fred. And thanks, okay. every, thanks everyone for watching. And I'm, I'm glad that you had some questions and I'm glad someone else knew about Lake Victoria. <laughs> well, good thanks. night, everybody. And uh, thank you so much for showing up. Uh, we had over 61 participants tonight. Thank, thank you very awesome. much.